Serpent Moon has ended, which means we can reflect on our time collecting snakes so we can see what went right, what went wrong, and what Crytek can hopefully improve for future events. I'll put timestamps in the description if you want to hop around, but I've gathered a lot of feedback in this channel and in the subreddit, so I think I have a pretty good read, but of course, Crytek has the hard data. Let me start by saying if you dislike the way this event was conducted, this was Crytek's first attempt at a battle pass, so now is the time to give your very best specific feedback to nudge future battle passes in the direction you want them to go. So first, I want to talk about what Crytek did right with this event, at least in my eyes. As a quick review, here are all the ways you could earn snakes, destroying or looting baskets, banishing snakes at altars, investigating event clues, killing bosses, looting hunter corpses, and extracting with at least one bounty. Although much of the feedback about this event was that it was too grindy, which we will talk about. I do appreciate that Crytek increased the event point value of event clues with a hot fix early on, raising event clues to 10 points and two snakes. So they were at least looking at the data in real time and making tweaks as they've done in previous events, and I think that's great. Also, we were accustomed to hunt events being break the thing around the map to farm clues, and Serpent Moon at least attempted to change this up. Sure, you can still break these snake dens, but the process of collecting snakes and depositing them at the altars at the boss lair did at least shift the gameplay a little bit, forcing players to be a little more cautious. Also, it reinforces Hunt's primary gameplay measure, risk versus reward, so I'll call that good design. I would still like to see a larger shift from future events, but I haven't heard any ideas being floated that really sound like an improvement, so I understand this isn't easy. But for me, I did find some enjoyment out of knowing I was at the boss lair by seeing the smokestack coming out of the altar. Another addition with the Serpent Moon was the new Serpent Moon night setting and an increased frequency of night maps. I really like this idea in theory with a small caveat. New times of day give the maps a new life, I feel, and I would welcome more event themed time settings, but as a content creator, night maps just don't make for very good videos, so they can feel like a little bit of a waste of time. I'm not trying to speak from an ivory tower, I know people really enjoy the night maps, I did too, but hopefully we will see the player count that justifies reintroducing the ability to pick your contract. My feedback here is not no more night maps, just that night maps are divisive and being able to plan for them would be nice. I also really like the idea of an evolving hunter. I don't particularly care for the Viper skin, but I would welcome more evolving skins in the future, especially if that shows your progression through the pass. So in my eyes, Serpent Moon was a fun, successful event if you weren't forcing yourself to grind points. I know different players have different time constraints, so for some, grinding was their only option, which sounds pretty weird to put into words, but you get the point. Now let's talk about the stuff I didn't really like for this event, and that starts with Cherry's Hunters. Just as a reminder, to complete this event you needed to earn a total of 24,700 event points. If you bought the Gilded Path, there was a premium option that included 3,000 event points and another bundle that included an additional 3,000 for a total of 6,000 purchasable event points. This screenshot was taken with about an hour left in the event, so I imagine the point values were a little higher, but just going off these numbers, we can do a little clown math. So let's just say roughly 10% of players completed the battle pass. Could be less, it could be more, but this is clown math. What I don't like about these numbers is you can't tell if these are earned points or purchase points. Don't get me wrong, if 100,000 people logged in during this event and now there are roughly 10,000 people that completed it and are satisfied with their new skins, that's a win for Crytek and that's great. And in the top 1%, obviously 6,000 points doesn't make much difference. 
but having a leaderboard that also shows purchase points doesn't really feel like a leaderboard. Speaking for myself, I completed the event with 28,897 event points, but that's with the extra 6,000, meaning gameplay alone I wouldn't have completed this event at 22,897 points. Don't skew that as, well, if the content creator couldn't do it, how could we? This may be a surprise, but I don't play this game 8 hours a day. My point is, the event point totals, even though they are publicly displayed, don't alleviate any ambiguity about the event points. I am okay with people being able to pay for shortcuts to gain cosmetic DLC, but I feel like this could be improved. And I think the monetization decisions will continue to catch flack, especially for boosters that begin immediately when purchased. I am happy to support Crytek. I have received way too much entertainment for the cost of the upfront purchase of the early access build, but as the shift in monetization continues, so will this tug of war between the devs and a certain section of the community. Also, the amount of points, I agree, was a bit of a grind, especially for players that don't have a consistent experience. I would be curious to see how the MMR star rating affected event point distribution, if at all. I think event points should reward the most avid of players, and Serpent Moon probably passes that test, but I have seen so many people turned off of the game just based on how many points they needed and didn't think they could earn. And given that this event was so long at 60 days, that is a long time to watch this thing unfold. So for me, I think a two month event is too long, but that does not necessarily mean a two month battle pass is too long. There is a part of me that just grew tired of the snake theme and the length of the event just exacerbated any small annoyances I had. For example, the event icons. I don't really want to see them after I've completed the event, and true, you can hide them. You can slide this objective slider all the way down to hide this icon. The only problem is the snakes stay there, so even if you turn down every slider, you just have this floating gold icon. This might have been a bug for me personally, but I could not get rid of this coin using the menus. The only way I could hide them was to use the no HUD steam command or just leave it on and be mildly annoyed. So please, Crytek, give us a separate slider for the event icons and status effects. Also, the system that gives certain legendary hunters extra range for event items in Darksight reduces the variety of legendary hunters we saw, especially early on. I have killed and been killed by so many prescience, night seers, and hail marys that I just don't want to see those skins anymore. Although, to Crytek's credit, the hunters they chose were visible in most situations, so kudos for that. I feel like that was intentional and I appreciate it. Okay, I have said my piece. I'm sure there are more lessons Crytek can learn from this event, but those are the ones that stuck with me. Tell me what you want Crytek to change about future events down in the comments and maybe someone over there will see this video. I asked you in a poll to see who would complete this event and here are those results. It makes sense that people subscribed to this channel are more active on Hunt Showdown, but I do feel bad for that 59%. I'm going to play a short response from the devs, but until the next video, goodbye. Uh, there is one question coming from Nadina. Uh, if, if we are satisfied with the amount of people that were able to finish the battle pass, it seemed a little bit grindy, especially in the later stages. And the uh, only thing I can say to that is that um, we, we are aware of the feedback and the data that we get uh, for, for from all the players participating to the event, either passively or actively. And we are on doing our best, I think, to try to elaborate whether to make it less grindy or more balanced for all stages. Because it is a fact, yes, that we, we had an incremental approach to basically the requirements for the serpent one so we are closely evaluating that 